Well, at this juncture, we'll take a breather here and cross over to the presidency where His Excellency Nani Kufado is addressing the nation on steps being taken to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. ...of a government towards its success. Indeed, decisions like those being taken by the leadership of Sunyani Technical University in the Bono region, the sanctioned students, lecturers, and non-teaching staff who flout the COVID-19 protocols, reinforce the collective determination of the majority of Ghanaians to defeat the virus. From tomorrow, Monday the 22nd of June, the next batch of students who will be going back to school, our final year senior high school students, SHS3, and second year Go Track students. On Thursday, I held consultations with members of both the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS, and the Association of Principals of Technical Institutes, AAPTI, to agree on the modalities for the return of the students. Despite the short notice for the meeting, I was happy to see the impressive turnout of their executives from all parts of the country. And I'm grateful for the wholehearted cooperation they pledge to government. Like their seniors at the university, SHS3 students will be in school for a total of six weeks before sitting for the WASI exams over a period of two weeks. SHS2 Go Track students who are returning to complete their first semester like the Green Tracks colleagues have done, will be in school for six weeks before going on vacation. All 1,167 senior high schools in the country have been fumigated and disinfected. Each student, teaching and non-teaching staff, invigilator and school administrator numbering some 800,000, will be provided with three pieces of reusable face masks, i.e. two, being provided tomorrow and the third within a fortnight. Nonetheless, I encourage parents to provide their wards and children with at least one face covering on their way to school. A total of 18,000 Veronica buckets, 800,000 pieces of 200 mils sanitizers, 36,000 rolls of tissue paper, 36,000 gallons of liquid soap, and 7,200 thermometer guns have been distributed. A maximum of 25 students will be permitted in each class. All day students in schools with boarding houses will be resident in these boarding houses. Whilst day students in schools without boarding facilities will commute from home and will be required to adhere to enhanced hygiene protocols. Eating in dining halls will be inappropriate numbers and no visitors to the schools will be allowed. There will be no mass gatherings and no sporting activities. Religious activities under the new protocols will be permitted. Social distancing and the wearing of face masks are obligatory in our schools. One dormitory block in each senior high school is to be used as an isolation center in the event of a student falling sick. Again, each sex senior high school has been mapped to a health facility and care will be provided to the sick by nurses assigned to these schools. Through the National Food and Buffer Stock Company, enough food supplies have been distributed to all schools Government is also making available 350 buses and 840 pickup vehicles 
to senior high schools that did not receive vehicles in 2016. For the first time in our nation's history, the government will absorb the West Sea examination fees of the 313,000 ACDs will be spent on this. These SHS3 students, also referred to by some as the Kufuado graduates, are also the first group of beneficiaries of government's free senior high school policy to sit the WASI exams. 1.2 million children, the highest such enrollment in our nation's history because of this policy, are currently in senior high school. Let us pause for a moment to consider what would have happened to the 400,000 more students who have entered senior high school between 2017 and 2019 without this policy in place. We introduced free SHS because history and the experiences of developed nations have shown that the most efficient way to empower the population and thereby guarantee the future of the nation is by investing in education and skills training of the youth. This is because it is the people of Ghana, Ghanaians like you and I, and especially the youth of today, who are going to build Ghana. Without an educated populace, it will be difficult to transition from the status of a developing to a developed nation. Summing it up, that most noble Ghanaian, James Quigia Agri, said a hundred years ago, and I quote, I want all my people, my countrymen and women, to be educated and thus render Africa indispensable in intellectual, spiritual, and commercial products of the world." Unquote. I take this opportunity to assure all parents and guardians the government is determined to protect the lives of the 800,000 students, teachers, and non-teaching staff who will be returning to school from tomorrow. I will be the last person to put the lives of the Akufuado graduates at risk. It bears repeating that they must all adhere strictly to enhanced personal hygiene and social distancing protocols, regularly wash their hands with soap, under running water, refrain from shaking hands, and wear masks to protect themselves and others. These rules apply to all of us. Fellow Ghanaians, the experts told us right at the beginning of this pandemic that whether the virus spreads or not is dependent on our individual behavior. Someone put it graphically that the virus has not got feet and cannot move by itself and that we humans spread it. The large majority of us continue to adhere to the protocols. Unfortunately, there are some who do not. Others have slackened, and an unacceptably significant number have refused to bathe them altogether. In such an atmosphere, if we do not take care, the virus will continue to spread, which will lead to intolerable pressure on our health facilities and caregivers. Each one of us must be part of the fight to stop the spread of the virus. Our approach to dealing with the virus, as I've always said, will be informed by the evolving science and data. At the outset of the pandemic, the scientific community and the World Health Organization, WHO, on 12 January 2020, recommended two main criteria for declaring someone who has tested positive as having recovered from the disease. The first is that you no longer have symptoms, and the second 
is that you're no longer capable of infecting others. Initially, the scientific thinking was that as long as you continue to test positive, you're capable of infecting others. Hence the requirement for the two consecutive negative tests before you're declared as having recovered. This was the science that informed the guidelines that Ghana has so far followed. However, there's now new evidence which states that after 10 to 14 days, a person with no symptoms is unlikely to transmit the virus to others, even if the person continues to test positive. It is on this basis that WHO has updated its guidelines as published per its clinical management of COVID-19 interim guidance of 27th May 2020, quote, as part of the clinical care pathway of a COVID-19 patient, unquote. According to WHO, asymptomatic patients, i.e., those who have tested positive for the virus but are not exhibiting any symptoms after 14 days, quote, are not likely to be infectious and therefore are unlikely to be able to transmit the virus to another person, unquote. After three weeks of analyzing and studying this update and recommendation and situating it in the Ghanaian context, in line with the admonition by WHO to member states, this new patient discharge recovery policy has now been adopted by Ghana, as have some countries in the European Union, Singapore, India, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Dubai. As of Saturday, 20th June, the total number of positives cumulatively stands at 14,000 and 154, out of the 270,300 tests conducted. Under the revised policy, 5,925 persons have recovered and been discharged. This brings the total number of recoveries to 10,473. The number of active cases is as 3,596. In our hospitals and isolation centers, we currently have 24 persons severely ill, six persons critically ill, with four persons on ventilators. 85 persons have regrettably died. This increased number of persons being discharged from our isolation and treatment centers brings in its weight yet another issue that we have to deal with, stigmatization. It is obvious that stigmatization is adding further dimensions to the already difficult problem of the pandemic. Part of the reason for the spread of the virus is the reluctance of some persons to admit they have tested positive and go into quarantine for fear of being stigmatized and in the process continue to be agents of the spread of the virus. Persons who test positive for the virus once they recover do not pose any danger whatsoever to anyone because the scientists tell us that they can no longer spread the virus. As I have said before, there is nothing shameful about contracting the virus. And consequently, we do not have to lose our sense of community because of this pandemic. Fellow Ghanaians, in line with our policy of providing optimal care for the sick and reducing COVID-19 related deaths, government continues to mobilize holding bay quarantine, isolation, and treatment centers across the country. I thank the Ghana National Association of Teachers, GNAT, for their admirable civic gesture of making available their facility in Edusso 
in the Ashanti region and the Catholic Bishops' Conference for agreeing to the use of their facilities across the country as isolation centers in the fight against COVID-19. These are timely offers which will ensure that our overall health care systems are not unduly burdened and overrun. Such institutions deserve the sincere appreciation of the entire nation, as does the gesture of the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwamnafrim Pombwati, who was offered a 70-bed hospital in Twasi in the Ashanti region as a COVID-19 treatment center. As I indicated in my address to the nation last week, the great majority of cases are in the Greater Accra and Ashanti regions. For these two regions, I have approved further investment in the following areas. Additional ICU bed facilities in Greater Accra region. A new treatment center for Ashanti region. Additional laboratories to strengthen clinical care to allow for real-time results. More medicines, consumables and equipment. And formal arrangements for a pool of specialist health professionals to complement the respective resident multidisciplinary health teams at various treatment centers. We continue to be indebted to our health workers and express sorrow over the death of Dr. Harry Owusu-Bwate, a pediatrician at the SDA hospital in Kwada Sukumase, and Sophia Addo, a nurse with the Ghana Manganese Company Hospital in Takwa, who both died in the line of duty. May their souls rest in perfect peace. I also urge the media to continue the positive work of public education they have been engaged in, especially now as restrictions are being systematically eased. Before I conclude, let me remind all Ghanaians, once again, that the wearing of masks is mandatory. Leaving our homes without a face mask, a face covering, or a face shield on is an offense. The police will conduct random checks in the enforcement of this directive. If you are arrested by the police defying this directive, your sanctions could be severe. So please, let us all, at all times, wear our masks. I appeal to each and every one of you to take this as a personal challenge and help rid Ghana of the virus. Even though we now have a better understanding of the dynamism of the virus in our country, even though the majority of people who contract the virus do not show any symptoms at all, and even though Ghanaians are not dying in the hundreds and thousands that were originally anticipated, we cannot afford to be complacent and let our guard down. Let us remain focused and adhere to the enhanced hygiene, social distancing, and mask-wearing protocols that have and must become part and parcel of our daily lives for the foreseeable future. We can do it if we work at it. And Rianu, if you are Chineko, SHS 3-4, Besa Aku School, Musumi Mienui, Aku Siyadie, Na Wane Tumia Chirong on Sosha Ikatuo, SHS2 go track for also, Besan Kouye won terma edikain, Senya green track for aye. Then she say, Ya, 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 and they say, Emra won't go school, no. I won't for intimate cosra won ma, I won't on a da body. You say, Bear ding a ma woof war. Then so, a ya ma ya mano. Now may sha woof war bo. Say, a bain. School for penny for any teacher for 
Pressure school for no so a bow who buy senior a fatter. The only year so here now, only a sunny a beefy as some jam. But in pie bought a tawin in a etchy. The one eat chap and so here no fair fair fair. And you mean me? It's a war. Why such a three be a buyer school? Kasi no ji inyo. Kone ame ya kase ni ke ha ame examine. SHS2 go track bi hu baku ame se. Ni ame yak be ame te ame na. Tomo green track bi le efe. Mi le ake i bawa ke ha follow e ake. Ame nye ame asra ame bi e. No ji inyo ne fe. Si nakai ba hi ke ha wo school bi e. Mi wo nye si ake un government. I'm not so lie, Unupai. Get all a fair. Back when you be old Joba. When you come with Bram examiner, and Marcus said, I met Kebasia Ujoba. Me sorry, Hanny. Me am a young Kunim. Let me in conclusion. With the Kufuado graduates, the SHS3 students, and their seniors in university, the best of luck in their forthcoming examinations, which will be conducted in safety. Ghana needs them all for her progress. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. So that was President Ekufado's 12th address to the nation. And for me, Bobi, um, I was really impressed with the comprehensive and detailed arrangements that have been made for senior high school students ahead of um, reopening tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, now it is a time for school authorities, teaching and non-teaching staff, to actually show leadership. Because just like the final year students who went back to the university, if you do not put your foot down to ensure that social distancing uh, uh, protocols are adhered to as well as uh, hand washing protocols are adhered to, mm. things can get out of hand. So it is important that leadership is shown. Teachers and non-teaching staff put their foot down to ensure that students wear masks all the time, mm -hmm. they're uh, adhering to social distancing protocols and the likes, or else uh, we, we really will not you know, be happy with, with what, you know, I mean, the repercussions. Mm, and it's really a fine time to roping um, <laughs> achievements of government, I right? Know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And, and what I also took away was the um, additional ICU yeah. for Greater Accra Region, considering the high number of cases being recorded in the Greater Accra Region mm -hmm. and um, the um, Kumasi as well. And so there are going to be new treatment centers in the Ashanti Region. You recall that um, the, um, some doctors were complaining about a lack of beds, oh, lack of floor, space. You know, yes. emergency unit centers. So, so I think that's also um, a good call as well. And finally, I mean, I, I, his emphasis on the need for us to uh, deal with stigmatization, for people to understand that once people indeed have recovered, they, 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 they won't you know, be able to transmit mm. as if they ha have actually you know, recovered. So the new WHO guidelines, because you know yesterday when the recovery um, um, cases went really yeah. up, a lot of people were talking, so Concerned. he's um, being able to explain the reason for the high numbers that we are recording. So we'll move on um, and still stay with um, the reopening of schools um, tomorrow. Parents whose words are among final year students will be resuming to, um, tomorrow say they have included personal protective equipment like the face mask as part of preparation ahead of the reopening. Now, although government is providing such items to schools to be given to students, some parents say there was a need to be proactive to prevent their wards from contracting the virus when they return to school. In this report, City News' Hafiz Tijani looks at how parents are preparing, um, how a parent rather is preparing her ward for school in the midst of COVID-19 safety measures. 
Dam George na daku ya boys twins Samuela and Daniela are final year science students with the Yasantua Girls Senior High School in Kumasi. The twins are part of students who will be going back to school on Monday after government announced the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. Although they are ready to return to school to take their examinations after the announcement by government they speak about how to acclimatize in the midst of covid-19 safety protocols because of this virus things will be difficult not as seen as first how things were so now going back to school how you mingle with your friends and everything you have to you have to take care. Everybody's afraid, like everybody's scared, first everybody's scared. Going back to school is going to be difficult for us. I learned the minister said 25 people in the class. Yeah, that one is going to help. And for our personal studies, it's going to be the same. Nothing will change. As boarding students, they have been given provisions that will last them for the period they will be in school. But their preparation this time included face masks and hand sanitizers. I think the government is doing his best by providing us with all these items. But I'm also pleading with the government. As in going to school and later if the virus spreads again, we coming back to it's going to be another problem because it's going to be a burden on the parents. We're having my sanitizer, uh, no smacks, yeah. And the kind of preparation that other, I know that my other colleagues are also doing the same. For what I hear, the government is going to provide certain items. Um, I hope it will come as soon as possible. And I'm praying that the preparation that the school is having, they will make sure that they will do it, like separating us in in class and in our dormitories, yeah. Samuela and Daniela have been taken through some COVID-19 safety measure sensitization by their mother. She tells me how different preparing her girls for school this time around has been. Preparations for them to go to school, the same thing as we did for them last time. Only that we are buying everything two, 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 two. Because we learned parents will not be allowed to go to the school to visit them in for anything. And my girls being twins, I have to buy everything four, 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 four for them because uh, I'll not be allowed to go to the school to see them, even no visiting for them. So their school was part of senior high schools in the Ashanti region that were disinfected and fumigated by waste management company Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. School authorities say they will enforce the measures strictly to protect the lives of the over thousand final year students who will be returning to school. Education Minister Matthew Opoku Prempe has reassured parents that students will be safe. Parents must be reassured that government is not taking the decisions lightly. Uh, government just doesn't sit up and say open schools. Um, whether we like it or not, life must continue. Uh, life must continue with, with knowledge. And knowledge comes from the hard science and data. Uh, so that is why we are reopening. We hope that the final year students that are going our sufficient knowledge to be able to maintain those protocols. At a recent news conference in Kumase, Ashanti Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service spoke about how the health directorate will help monitor the situation when students resume their various schools. Final year students like Samuela and Daniela are preparing feverishly to go back to school after government announced the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. Now with the rising cases of COVID-19, parents and their wards are extra careful in their preparations. From the Ashanti region, Hafiz Tijani for City News. 
Now, authorities at the Sunyani Senior High and Chenya Mamfo Senior High Technical Schools in the Bono region say they are ready to welcome final year and gold track second year students to school. Now, all classrooms and dining halls have been disinfected as part of preparations towards reopening the schools. City News' Michael Sapomingfum visited the two schools and reports. At the entrance of Sunyani Senior High School, Sisek, is this banner which instructs the wearing of those marks before entering the campus. Final year and second year go trust students are expected back to school on Monday to complete their academic work. This follows a presidential directive to reopening senior high schools across the country. Authorities at the Sunyani Senior High School, Susek, say they are ready to welcome the students back to school. Uh, we are expecting about 1,700 students. 856 students, final years registered for the exams, uh, together with the day students, 856. And the Form 2 GO students number up to 844. So, you know, we are expecting 1,700 students tomorrow. Just yesterday, Zoom Lion also came and disinfected the classrooms, dormitories, and all the places, especially where students will use dining hall, classroom dormitories. And we have also made available some uh, Veronica buckets uh, in anticipation of waiting for what government will bring. Mr. Ancien Japan also noted that they are in touch with health authorities to deal with any suspected case of COVID-19. We are fortunate to be in the regional capital. We have a lot of health facilities. We have the regional hospital. We have Sujan Municipal Hospital. We have SD Hospital. We are been linked to municipal hospital where we have been attending i mean we have been part of that we also have a clinic here we have a nurse in fact a government recognized nurse on uh, two staff here so we have also been asked to get a place one of the classrooms as or one of the rooms as a isolation center in the event that we suspect somebody uh, having the virus. Headmaster of the Trinia Manfo Senior High Technical School, Gordon Wase Manfo, says they are also ready to welcome the students. We are ever ready. Uh, before even the directives came that we had to report, we met and we formed a task force. As you can see, they are here. We are purely day school. But because the students are reporting tomorrow, they are here to make the final arrangement. Already, we have uh, an old student who has donated two uh, thermometer guns to us and some Veronica buckets. We have made metal stand. We have our soap. So we, we are ready. We have everything. We're waiting for the government want to supplement what we have. From the Sunyani Senior High School, Susek, Michael Saponifum, for City News. This is still the City Newsroom on City TV. When we return, we'll take you to Wulensi in the northern region where some youth bent down MPP office in protest of the outcome of the parliamentary primary held there on Saturday. We have the details on that particular story and many more when we return. Just stay with us. Shop online, get free swipes, and enjoy greater security with a card that turns banking on its head. That's African Nacity. That's Absa. 
businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, the City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with APSA Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Join the virtual business forums every Tuesday in June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and gain the knowledge you need to kickstart your business. Explore new ways of engaging your customers with the e-commerce forum on Tuesday the 9th of June at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get tips from the Agribusiness Forum on how to create another career in agribusiness on Tuesday the 16th of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And get all the industry knowledge with a trade forum on the topic. Will export trade be the same again on the 23rd of June 2020 at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Revamp your business and work environment this June with the virtual business forums only on City TV every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. To be interactive and ask questions pertinent to your business, join in the forum via Zoom. To participate via Zoom, register by calling 0205-973-973. That's 0205-973-973. City Business Festival is powered by City TV and Absa Bank with support from the Ghana Investments and Promotion Center. You all come back. Now, in the aftermath of Saturday's NPP primaries in the Wollensi constituency in the Nanumba South District in the northern region, supporters of one of the losing aspirants, Abdullahi Haruna, made their frustrations known by almost burning the party office. Now, they alleged that there were some instances of voter impersonation that affected the chances of Haruna, and they wanted these irregularities corrected by the party. Mohammed Aminu Alabira has more in the following report. Yesterday, the MPP parliamentary primaries were successful across the country, but in the Wulensi constituency of the Nanumba South District, where the incumbent MP, Thomas Ogaja, was contested by a chartered accountant, Abdelaya Haruna. Both were confident of winning the contest, but at the end of the polls, the incumbent MP, Thomas Ogaja, beat his opponent, Abdullah Haruna, with just two votes. Ogaja had 212 votes, whilst Alaji Haruna had 210 votes. This sparked some agitation in the area after it was reported that some people had allegedly used the names of diseased delegates to vote in some polling centers, but the EC went ahead and declared Thomas Ogaja the winner. The supporters say when Haruna's agent protested, they were driven away from the police stations whilst other voters were allowed to cast their ballots. The supporters marched to the party office and threatened to burn down the building if the regional and national executives failed to annul the results from polling stations where alleged wrong acts had taken place. This thing, we are going to burn it. No matter how the situation, whether they declare it as Al Haji Aruna is the winner or Ogaja is the winner, this thing is going to be burned. Because he built it. He was the money building it. He was the money building it. Who thought did not touch anything? Why, why would you burn it? Why would you burn it? We are saying that. Because yesterday, yesterday they declared at the uh, Electoral Commission office that Ogaja is the winner. And as, uh, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, Oga, Ogaja is the winner. We came here to burn it. And they brought military, military, uh, military and police here. They came here yesterday and they chased us. The reason why we organize or we mobilize here is that we want justice from the party. We held election yesterday and the rule and regulations of the uh, distant party is anybody who passes away is not supposed to take part in the general election. And when you look at the 
incumbent MPs place, one person passes away, and uh, one fledge again. That is Nigeria. Two people pass away, and they casted their votes. And we don't know the particular people who casted the vote. So we are appealing to the Council of Elders and the regional level that those who casted the vote for the dead people should be the, the, that particular police station should be cancelled. Police and military were deployed to maintain order. When City News reached the party executives, they declined commenting. The communication officer of the party in the constituency, Ata Imoro, tells City News that all the results that were declared were duly certified by all the agents. He called for unity among the supporters. This is an internal contest. It's not like uh, the uh, external contest between two different parties. We consider ourselves as one family. And uh, I, I think they have the right to express their feelings. But uh, in as much as we try to express our feelings, we also be aware that this, the, the contest is not ending here. We should be looking into the future, what will happen in the general election. Three polling stations were mentioned to City News as places the alleged breaches had occurred. City News Independent to verify the claims revealed that at Moba, the MP's own village, the chairman had indeed passed away about two years ago and had not been replaced. At Moyindo, the polling station organizer Enoch Kunja relocated to Zabzugu constituency and had not been replaced. At Namani, the secretary had traveled, but the name of his temporary replacement was not in the register. The aspirants have been invited to Tamale to meet with the regional party executives to find solutions to these issues. And now 39 incumbents lost their seats in the NPP primaries held on Saturday. There are a number of influential persons within parliament who lost their seats. The new entrants also feature young government appointees. The following report takes a look at some of the persons who have lost seats and those who have won. Beginning from the Ashanti region, the MPs who lost their seat in that region are Daniel Ochema Bwaji from Bantama. Collins Osua Mankwa from Mesha North, Ben Abdallah Banda from Ofenso South, Albert Joseph Kwam from Manson Kwanta, Ajua Akunde from Bosome Freho, Kwabna Ousu Ediomi from Ejoso, Kennedy Kankam representing Inshaeso, Kwame Asafweje from the Nsuta Kwaman Beposu constituency, Kojo Apia Kubi from Achuma Kwangoma, and Nana Mafu Aminiampong from Efija Kwabre North. To the Bno region, Dr. Kwabna Chumyama from Brekum East and Kwesi Sebi from the Doma East constituencies lost their seats. To the Central region, Anthony Efa from the Esikuma Odobin Brakwa constituency as well as Abraham Odum from the Trifu Atimokwa constituency and Nana Mwakon from the Upper Dentra East constituency lost their seats in the region. In the Afro region, Ben Hazen Joseph Daha from Mesutifi North lost his seat. In the Northeast region, Dr. Sagri Bambangi lost his seat in Walewale. In the Northern region, Al Haji Wahab Humbe lost his seat to represent Tolon. To the Eastern region, where Chairman of the Finance Committee, Mark Esibe Yabua, lost the new driving South seat. William Ejapon Kwetu, who is Chairman of the Education Committee, lost his seat in Akchem Odan. Seth Kwame Champo lost the Empire to seat. Amase lost his seat in Akwitia. Frederick Oparianza, chairman of the Communications Committee, lost his seat in Suhum. Kwabna Ohimin Tinyase lost his seat in Kede. Robert Kwesi Amwa lost his seat in Achiase. The new entrants who are government appointees include the Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan, John Kuma, who won the Ajusu seat. The CEO of Maslock, Stephen Amwa, on his second attempt, won the Inshayasu seat. Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Education Service, Vincent Eko Asifwa, won the old Tafu seat. In the Eastern Region, Michael Ochiribefi won the new Jabin seat. Michael Ochiribefi is the Executive Secretary of the Free Zones Authority. In the Bnu Region, Chairman of the Health Committee, Dr. Chumyama, lost the Brekum seat. In the Northern Region, Director of Procurement at Cocoa Board, Farouk Aliu Mahama won the seat in Yendi.
You're still watching the City Newsroom. Time for us to take a breather here. When we return, the Foreign Affairs Ministry begins investigations into circumstances surrounding the demolition of a building at the residence of Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana. Details shortly. Do stay. Extra minutes and extra unlimited calls. Not just that. Even our extra data doesn't expire. Speedy fill up. Simply dial star one 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 hash to bundle now. Airtel to go. Life is simple. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel three six three. On Go TV, access City TV on channel one eight two. On a digital TV. Please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Service and national security have commenced investigations into the demolition of a building belonging to the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana. Now, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the probe is to unravel the circumstances surrounding the demolition. Now, the probe follows the demolition of a staff quarters and residence for visiting diplomats at the residence of the Nigerian High Commission. We have more in this report. Armed men invaded the premises of the residence of the Nigerian High Commissioner in Accra on Friday, 20 June 2020, and pulled down one story building. According to eyewitnesses, the men forcefully entered the premises at night, demolished a building, and threatened the security men on guard. The development has been widely condemned, with many raising concerns on its effect on the diplomatic relationship between Ghana and Nigeria. But in a sharp reaction, the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Ghana says it has commenced investigations into the matter. A Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, Charles already condemned the action and called for calm among diplomats as his outfit takes measures to bring finality to the matter. He added that security has been beefed up at the premises to prevent future occurrences. This story got to me last night that some people had uh, gone to the premises of the High Commissioner and uh, put down the fence wall and also entered the property and uh, used the bulldozer to break through some of the buildings that were on the property. Uh, this is contrary to the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. And uh, it's so unfortunate that this should happen. We've spoken to the police, national security, to ask, an immediate guest go into this matter, you know, find out the perpetrators and bring them to book. You know, diplomatic premises are inviolable. You know, you can't just enter into a diplomatic uh, premises. And these embassies are supposed to be protected by the host state. So Ghana is supposed to protect, you know, the embassies and the consulates of foreign countries. So this shouldn't have happened. And we're expecting the security apparatus to work as quickly as possible you know, go go behind, you know, what has happened, find out the perpetrators, 
and quickly bring them to you. Now, so staying with this story there, Osusto has accused the Nigeria High Commission of trespassing on a parcel of land belonging to it. Now, this follows reports indicating that armed men allegedly invaded a parcel of land the commission was erecting a building on and pulled down part of the said building. Now, the paramount chief of Osu, Ni Okwe Kinka Douna the Sith, in a statement clarified that the said land belongs to the Osusto and not the state. Ni Okwe King Kaduna the Sith in a statement alleged that a previous structure on the said land was destroyed while a new one was erected by a supposed Nigerian businessman with support from the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana. Now the statement perceived the structure being erected by a Nigerian business person with the aid of the Nigerian High Commission as an attempt by the Nigerian mission to forcibly take over the said parcel of land. Now, Ni Okwe Kinkadona the Sith insisted that the foreign office of the commission had not purchased any parcel of land from the stool or the lands commission. He also said that trespasser had failed to honor the council's several invitations for a discussion on the ownership of the land. That's how we wrap up this edition of the City Newsroom. Our website, citynewsroom.com, has more information on our top stories and more. Subscribe to City Tube on YouTube for more exclusive video content. You can also download the City Newsroom app on the Google Play Store or the App Store. Yeah, you can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Zoe Abubeidu Ado. My name is Bobby Osei. Many thanks for watching.